congratulations on the arrival of your new baby. My name is Esther, one of the pharmacists from KK Women's and Children's Hospital. Today I'll be sharing with you some important information regarding the medications you'll receive after delivery and upon discharge from the hospital. Knowing how to take these medications correctly can help you feel better and recover faster from the delivery process. We will be looking at the following types of medications. As a gentle reminder, kindly note that you may or may not receive all the medicines mentioned in this video as this depends on your drug allergies and medical conditions. Images in the video are for illustration only and may be subjected to change due to the change in manufacturer's packaging and branding. Information in this video is not intended to replace the healthcare provider's advice. Please check with the doctor or pharmacist if you have any concerns. Please refer to the medication labels when receiving your medications upon discharge from the hospital for the exact dosing information. So, let's begin with iron. Here are the preparations containing iron. Why is it so important to complete your iron supplements? Iron is needed to produce red blood cells to replenish the blood loss during and after delivery. Low iron levels may cause dizziness, excessive tiredness, as well as shortness of breath. Eating iron-rich foods such as lean red meat, fish, leafy vegetables and beans may help you maintain a good level of iron too. However, certain drinks such as tea or coffee and milk, as well as other foods high in calcium salts, may limit the absorption of iron, so it is best to space them two hours apart. Certain iron supplements are absorbed better on an empty stomach. Please refer to the medication label for specific instructions with regard to taking with food. However, if stomach discomfort occurs, please take it after food. Oral iron may also cause darkening of the stools. This is harmless. It can sometimes cause constipation. So remember to drink sufficient fluids and increase the intake of fruits and vegetables to prevent this. What happens if constipation doesn't go away even with a fibre-rich diet? Please note that it may take a few days for your bowel movement to return to normal after delivery, so please don't be too worried if you have not been able to move your bowels. In the meantime, we will be giving you some laxatives to help with short-term relief of constipation. You may consider taking the laxatives regularly until you can move your bowels without any pain or the need to strain. Two kinds of laxatives are commonly prescribed. Both work differently to soften the stools to help relieve constipation, so it's okay for both to be taken together if necessary. They may take up to two days to work, and having adequate water intake can help them work better. Common side effects include stomach cramps or bloating, which often goes away once the constipation resolves. After taking liquid paraffin, avoid lying down for at least 30 minutes to avoid medicine from going to your lungs. A cup or spoon will be supplied together. Please use it to measure the dose out accurately. Most women will experience pain following childbirth. It is very important that your pain is well controlled so that you can comfortably care for yourself and your baby. In KKH, we will be offering you regular pain relief. Taking the medications at regular intervals rather than waiting for the pain to get bad will allow your pain to be better controlled. For mild to moderate pain or fever, you may take paracetamol alone. Do not take more than 8 tablets in 24 hours. Remember not to take this together with other medicines containing paracetamol, such as Panadol preparations. NSAIDs are medicines like methanamic acid, naproxen or ibuprofen which may help to relieve severe pain or pain that does not improve one hour after taking paracetamol. If needed, NSAIDs can be safely taken at the same time as paracetamol, especially during the initial period after delivery for better pain control. They may cause gastric pain, so take them after food to minimise this. As an added precaution against gastric pain, antacid tablets or famotidine may be prescribed together with NSAIDs. This helps to protect the stomach. A two-hour interval is needed between antacid tablet and medicines other than NSAIDs. Mothers with insufficient breast milk may take both fenugreek and doperidone regularly to increase milk supply. To minimise the risk of engorgement while on these medications, please perform breast massage and breastfeed on demand or express the milk three-hourly. 
please also reduce the dose gradually and stop the medications when there is sufficient milk supply. Keep the medications in a cool dry place away from light. Some medicines need to be refrigerated. Please refer to the specific storage instructions on the medication labels. Please also remember to keep medicines out of sight and the reach of children. We hope that you now have a better understanding of your medications. Do note that all the medications mentioned in this video are safe for breastfeeding. The information in this video has been summarised in the leaflet which will be given to you for your reference. If you have any questions, feel free to approach our pharmacy staff when receiving your medicines. Thank you for your kind attention. We wish you and your family the best of health always. Mm -hmm.